and welcome back to Boer TV. My name is Ntwaki Mokete. And I'm Constant van Graan. And we gaan ons jou gast hier wees for the second episode of Boer TV. How can we find you back, mag jy vraag? Because of you, since our first episode aired, we have received so much feedback and input from our viewers that we simply couldn't wait any longer. That's right, Nswaki. All we can say is wow and thank you. We have a jam-packed show for you that shows exactly why the Northwest University is one of the top tertiary institutions in our country. We know Florence Nightingale and Clara Batten, the founder of Red Cross, but the thousands and thousands of nurses within our country remain largely anonymous. It's after dank sy hulle ongelooflike bydrae dat so baie van ons gesond by Boa TV in Geskakel kan wees. We now cross over to Sam Junior in Mahi Gang where Boa TV caught up with Professor Abel Pinar to see how the Northwest University School of Nursing is changing the nursing landscape. Prof. Abel Pinar, thank you so much for having us today here at the NW School of Nursing. Uh, according to you, what is the current state of nursing in the country? I think the current state of nursing is like anywhere in the world, shortage and uh, a lack of competence of nurses. As a school and the NW, what are you doing to address these issues and challenges in the country? We've uh, increased our student intake, and secondly, we have really very good uh, clinical facilities that our state-of-the-art simulation laboratory, as well as in the community. Can you tell us more about some of the state-of-the-art facilities within the School of Nursing? So with the state of the art simulation laboratory is that we have four disciplines that we are teaching and for community we are in the community, in the villages, in the rural of the rurals and for uh, medical surgical nursing we have state of the art facilities, the low and the high risk fidelities where dolls can really talk and they can scream of pain so our students get competent in the simulation lab before they move out to the practice. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take your, your blood pressure. Do you allow me to do that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna put a cuff on you, man. It's gonna feel a little bit uncomfortable. No, it's okay. Now, it is very essential for me to do this procedure so that we can get the, the correct diagnosis for you. We also have got a recording studio for the mental health where they do counseling and they are recorded and they get feedback. So we have really the good facilities here to increase that competence of our students. Matimelo, congratulations on being elected as the chairperson of the South African Nursing Students Association. Can you tell us how that incredible opportunity came about? Um, it all started when I first attended the symposium for Sansa and Fondisa in Port Elizabeth last year. I was only a first year student and this year hosting the event and saw people that they actually have so much faith in me when it comes to leadership and leading the ship of the universities that offer a degree in nursing. It all brought us back to the true values of a leader to say we have the advocates and we have all those that are in the forefront and making noise. So I would just say to this one, I'm not a person of long speeches but my work spoke for itself and I believe that a true leader is the one that entails the role and capabilities of leading a large crowd. Thank you, Sam Jr. Nurses are indispensable, unsung heroes who don't get enough appreciation for their many sacrifices, yet we owe them more than we could ever imagine. The Northwest University has been going through a great-scale training process and has made different changes as well as different learning events. Sibu Siso caught up with Professor Robert Balfour, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Teaching and Learning, to find out more. Since joining the Northwest University in 2011, Professor Robert Balfour has carved a path of excellence. He has served as the Dean for the Faculty of Education Sciences. He is an NRF-rated researcher. And from the year 2016 to 2017, he led the Education's Joint Executive Task Team in the Northwest University's transition towards an integrated single faculty structure. Regardless of the position that Professor Robert Balfour has had, he remains as affable and as humble as ever. Okay, so Professor, you were recently appointed Deputy Vice-Chancellor in Teaching and Learning. Can you tell us more about what this post entails? Mm, thanks, CBC. So, so this is a, a job at which <clears throat> I think most institutions choose to focus on the quality issues around teaching and learning. So on the one hand about student experience, on the other hand about professional standards and how the university meets the professional standards expected of a higher education institution. 
So what do you view as the biggest challenges that you'll face in your tenure as Deputy Vice-Chancellor? At Northwest, the, the biggest challenge is going to be around the alignment, the alignment issues within our programs across the three campuses. So my sense is that, again, that has a two-dimensional aspect. The one is in relation to how students experience the curriculum, and the other is in relation to our ability as university to offer a curriculum in an equitable and transformative manner. And what do you look forward to the most? Well, for the moment, I think less administration and more innovation would be nice. <laughs> but uh, that will come with time. I think the, the opportunity this is for us as university is around the, the innovation potential, the design and curriculum making potential. That's the really exciting thing about the job. So, Professor, the Northwest University recently concluded an extensive alignment process. Can you elucidate for us why this is a step in the right direction for the university going forward? Yeah. Yes, certainly. So any number of our external audits, both by professional bodies and also through the Department of Higher Education, the Council for Higher Education, any number of those audits have pointed to concerns around the ability of the institution to offer programs of equal quality and consistent delivery across the three campuses and our ability to service our open distance learning students in a quality way. That has been probably the core driver behind the restructuring process now. We wish to know the men behind the professor. On a lighter note, can you tell us more about what you enjoy doing in your spare time and the things that make you happy? I really, really enjoy painting. I'm a, if I had another life, I would have been a, a painter, a poor artist. And um, in my spare time, that's, that's active, actively what I, what I do. So every few years, I try to get an opportunity together to exhibit. I last exhibited in 2015, and then before that in 2007. So you can tell that, you know, it's a, more or less a once every five or six years chance. But that's really what uh, is, a, is a passion behind, behind the academic life. I would say that's probably what interests me the most. A tough task awaits, but you'll be hard pressed to find a better person for the job. Look out for an interview with the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Research and Innovation, Professor Nancy Paswana Mafuya, in a future edition of Bua TV. We now shift our focus to our campus in the Val Triangle, where researchers are redefining the uses of eye-tracking technology. Eye-tracking technology is revolutionising the way we assimilate information and how we are kept safe. Our guests today are Dr. Esti Hirfe-Jordan and Gordon Matthew, who will be taking us through a tour of the eye-tracking lab. Let's have a look. So eye-tracking is basically the science of measuring eye movement while in response to visual or auditory materials. In terms of um, visual reality and augmented reality, a lot is being done in terms of eye-tracking research. And there you'll probably see the biggest advancements in terms of eye-tracking technology. Eye-tracking will allow gaming designers um, to do a lot more, to create more Im immersive experiences for users. Um, interaction platforms can be developed um, and a lot can be done in that domain. In terms of usability studies, um, it's becoming increasingly important for companies to assess their um, usability of their apps, their websites, their platforms. Um, and important for them to know that customers actually know how to use it and that they use it to its full potential and if there's something that's not right that they can improve and modify that. Um, in terms of the types of research that we do, um, there are also very strong links to what, what we can add to society. We typically look at how people read, how people engage with texts. Um, and a lot of our current studies uh, have very strong ties to specifically education. One of our PhD students is looking at reading in Sepedia in English um, at school learners and how they read in Sepedia in English. And through the eye tracking, we can actually see where they struggle. Um, and this, of course, is very important. Um, we can use this kind of in information to develop reading programs or intervention programs to actually empower learners a lot more. And we all know that, that reading and literacy is a national problem. Um, one of our other studies is looking at um, the cognitive effort that's involved in looking at educational videos with subtitles. Because now students have to listen, they have to watch and they have to read. 
So we're asking, can they benefit from this or is it too much information at, at a specific point in time? And this kind of information or findings from that study can help educators to plan edu educational design. Um, we also look at studies on um, academic interventions. So one of our other PhD students is looking at mind maps. That's a popular tool to help students study, but students are struggling. So when we use an eye tracker, we can see where are they stuck? Where in the process do they get lost? And what do we need to do to help them? One of our researchers in Upset is looking at bilingual tests to assess academic literacy. So when you actually provide students with the test in both Susutu and English, will they actually, and to what extent, do they use both the English and the Susutu to help them answer their questions? Se o se mputsi maso ke ya gola hore ha ke mong fela le wena mo mo le nteng se o butsi maso me he na ke abe ke le yena tis ghi ba mogwaetsi go tswa mani go la fana bail park now that was a real eye open i'm sure i'm not alone when i say i now look at the world differently we sluit af vandag se program met 'n kykie na die NWI se onlangse leierskapsberaad wat behel sit om 'n goeie leier te wees is it the willingness to take responsibility in tough situations or the ability to weave together a team driven to excel? Or is it all that we have said so far and so much more? Now, we will be able to get the best of 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 the best. When you think about leadership, I've said it's rather like an elephant, hard to describe but you know leadership when you see it. A leader's actions account for 30 to 40% of the net asset value of the company and indeed business performance. But more importantly, I think, what we are failing is accountability. If you are not rooted in the right values, in integrity and the right principles, you are likely to do the wrong thing. We're expert at pointing to they must and someone else should. I urge you to recognize that the transformer, the leader, is you. Amongst those in attendance was Justice Bess Ngabinde, who serves as a judge of the Constitutional Court of South Africa. Het jy geweet rechter in Kabinde het haar LLB graad hier by die NWI in 1986 ontvang? I sure did. She was born in a tiny village of Silvergrans in the Northwest province and just look at where she is now. And with that, we've come to the end of yet another show. And that was quite a fun show, wasn't it? I hope you viewers also enjoyed it. Comment below with any suggestions and let us know what your feelings and thoughts are about Boa TV. Until next time, be involved. Be informed, be innovative. Reale Boja. Ciao.